Don't talk to me of love. I've had an earful and I get tearful when I've downed a drink or two. I'm one of your talking wounded. I'm a hostage. I'm marooned, but I'm in Paris with you. Yes, I'm angry at the way I've been bamboozled and resentful at the mess I've been through. I admit I'm on the rebound and I don't care where are we bound. I'm in Paris with you. Do you mind if we do not go to the Louvre? If we say sod off to sod in Notre Dame? If we skip the Champs Elysees and remain here in this sleaze old hotel room doing this and that to what and whom, learning who you are, learning what I am? Don't talk to me of love. Let's talk of Paris, the little bit of Paris in our view. There's that crack across the ceiling and the hotel walls appealing and I'm in Paris with you. Don't talk to me of love. Let's talk of Paris. I'm in Paris with the slightest thing you do. I'm in Paris with your eyes, your mouth. I'm in Paris with all points self. Am I embarrassing you? I'm in Paris with you. In this poem, the persona describes his feelings of resentment and his disillusionment to a new lover following the end of his previous relationship. He seems careless and dismissive of the traditional romantic delights of Paris and instead asks his new lover whether they might just focus on having sex and plenty of it. He claims that he doesn't want to think about love or the long term, but they should just get on with enjoying each other's metaphorical Parises. I wouldn't thank you for a Valentine starts with a rather strident, unexpected, negative construction, and so does in Paris with you. We have the imperative don't, confirming that at this point in time, the persona is in an abrupt, tetchy mood and has no intention of embroiling himself in an intense emotional hookup. That said, there are signs of self-deprecating humour within the use of colloquial expressions and silly multi-syllabic rhymes such as earful and tearful. The persona has emotional scars, hence his implicit suggestion that he is a walking wounded. However, of course, he actually says talking wounded and the tweaking of this expression whilst maintaining the suggestion of being psychologically damaged post-relationship shows that he is able to deal with the topic in a more light-hearted way and perhaps that getting these things off his chest, talking, may help him recover. After earful and tearful, there is a sillier, multisyllabic rhyme of wounded and marooned. The latter word is based on maroons, with the additional syllable added to force the rhyme with wounded. This made-up word sounds funny and detracts from the seriousness of the suggestion that he feels isolated and displaced, living in a world without the certainty of his previous partner. In spite of colloquial revelations about current angst, the last line of the first stanza does seem to focus more positively on the present. The conjunction but seems to represent a desire to move on, make the best of the current situation, whilst Paris is considered one of the great, beautiful, romantic cities of the Western worlds. Line six and seven essentially say very similar things, albeit with line six seeming more explicitly critical of his previous partner. The use of parallelism here builds up momentum and shows the depth of the persona's anger at how he was treated by his previous partner. The persona's raw honesty towards his new lover is notable. He says openly that he is on the rebounds i.e. getting involved in a new relationship largely as a reaction to past pain. Yes, his tone somehow remains light-hearted, as seen in the rephrasing within year nine, with we are bound being changed to are we bound to force the multi-syllabic rhyme with rebounds. The jauntiness of the tone, though, belies the genuine hurt that lies beneath. Within this verse, the conjunction but has been omitted from the final line refrain, resulting in a punchier feel and a possible determination to try to focus solely on the present. The third stanza reflects this increased determination to focus on the present rather than wallow in the past, as epitomised by references to famous Parisian landmarks. 
and the movement towards using the first person plural we. His flippancy towards world famous landmarks is comic. He wants to skip the Champs Elysees and say sod off to the sodding Notre Dame. Whilst the contrast between these beautiful spots and the grubby hotel room is anti romantic, implying an unparalleled lust for fantastic sex which will blot out all else. Stanza 3 sees another comically forced rhyme, Elysee and Slizee, which emphasises the discrepancy between traditional associations of Paris, beauty, fabulous landmarks, romantic strolling, and his own desires for sex within a distinctly unromantic location. Notice how the lines get shorter halfway through the stanza, reflecting increased intensive desire and shorter breathing as the prospect of sex may be getting closer. Notice the final line which suggests that sex with his new lover may help him learn what he is. Has his past relationship left him so bamboozled and disorientated that he now needs to re-examine his own identity? What kind of a person is he and does he want to be within this brave new world? Stanza 4 uses the same negative construction from the first stanza but this time goes on to address his new partner rather than talk endlessly about his own past hurts and emotions. Let's talk of Paris is, of course, short for let us talk of Paris. And even, this, even if this Paris seems a metaphor for sex between the two of them, it does represent a move towards sharing rather than light-hearted, whinging introspection. Certainly, this hotel room seems particularly dingy with a crack across the ceiling and peeling wallpaper. The persona doesn't shy away from these details, but seems to reference them in order to instill greater energy and purpose into what he hopes will take place in this hotel room. I.e., yes, the hotel room is crap, but that means that we need to focus all the more on making sure our lovemaking is as great as possible. And in this stanza, the multi-syllabic rhyme actually works without the need for additional syllables or French accents within sordid English words. This is fitting, as we are now in the position when the two individuals may be ready to become one. The fact that the refrain, don't talk to me of love, is used again at the beginning of stanza five, may be an indication not just about the persona's defensive, frail emotional state, but also that he may be worried that his new lover may adapt an overly serious, intense attitude towards their relationship too early on. This mustn't happen because, by God, the persona wants to focus on sex, hence the sensual anaphora of I'm in Paris with followed by various body parts and movements in lines 26 to 28. The shift from eyes, mouth to all points south, implying vagina, is reminiscent of a lustful Juliet when she lists various body parts of Romeo before once again using a euphemism, although this time about the male genitalia. If you recall, she cries, what's Montague? It is nor hand, nor foot, nor arm, nor face, nor any other part belonging to a man. Stanza one is I, I, I. But here in the final stanza, the persona actually asks his lover a question, albeit one aimed at raising the sexual tension further. The end of the poem is more confident and assertive. The persona seems to have accepted the fact that he is in Paris with a new lover and my God, he is going to make the most of things. Time for you to think to plan, to focus sharply on how this poem presents an unconventional view of love. Topic sentences and quotations, please. It's pause time. In my essay, I would start off by suggesting that the persona is embarking upon this new relationship, freely admitting that he has been psychologically scarred by a previous one. I would back up this point by using the quotation, I'm one of your talking wounded, I'm a hostage, I'm marooned it. 
in my next paragraph, I would point out that, that the persona suggests that it can be more enjoyable to spend time in a dirty hotel room than exploring world famous tourist attractions in the city of love. I would explore the comic Polyptoton within, if we say, sod off to sodding Notre Dame. And then I would suggest that the persona repeatedly states categorically that he doesn't want to get involved emotionally, and yet he is desperate to have sex. To back this up, I would explore the quotation, don't talk to me of love, let's talk of Paris. In my model paragraph, I write, the persona suggests that it can be more enjoyable to spend time in a dirty hotel room than exploring world famous tourist attractions in the city of love. He asks, without expecting a response, whether his traveling companion would mind if we say sod off to sodding Notre Dame. The use of such offensive language, intensified by the polyptoton, is both amusing and shocking. Notre Dame has been known for centuries as a beautiful cathedral by the Seine in Paris and an enormously popular place to visit for Christians, romantic couples and indeed any tourists. The implication is that the persona wants to defy convention, partly due to residual anger, anger at the breakup of his past relationship and focus almost exclusively on satisfying his own physical lust. <laughs>